so today I'm going to attempt a lecture on section 2.2. I imagine it's going to be as fascinating as my lecture on 2.1. Um, a lot of chapter 2 is just notation and definitions. Uh, there's not any algebra in, in the chapter at all. So in this section, the author introduces the concept of subset. And depending on how old you are and when you went to school, you might have actually seen this in a really uh, early grade uh, back in my day in Ohio in the 70s. They, uh, we did subsets every year in grade school and sets. Anymore. Anyway, so th there's a word that we need to know the definition of. Again, I won't test on definitions, but um, it's good to know them. So um, the, def the word is subset. We say a set A is a subset of a set B. And this notation, I call this a subset symbol. And it says for A to be a subset of B, basically all the elements of A have to be contained in B. Basically, this is just A, a, is, a is contained or equal to B. You could, th you could think of this notation is is contained and with the li under with a line under it or is equal if i take that line out from under it we call that a proper subset symbol and this symbol i can read as is contained in but is not equal So a subset of a set is a set that is contained in the set that's written to the right of it. Real specifically, it says for A to be a subset of B, A has to be a set. If something isn't a set, then it can't be a subset. And then this line basically says every element of A is an element of B. So there's a little example here. It says, is the set A a subset of B? Well, first of all, if I look at A, A is a set. It's written with these set brackets, so A is a set. So yes, it's a set. For it to be a subset, every element in A has to be in B. A has the elements, the vowels, A, E, I, O, U. B has the letters of the alphabet, which are A, B, C, D, dot, 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 Z. And if I looked through a complete listing of set B, I'd see the A, somewhere's in it, I'd see the I, somewhere's I'd see the O, the U. So the answer to this question is um, A is a set, every, L, every letter in A is contained in B, so is A a subset of B? The answer would be yes, A is a subset of B. And there's another question. Is A a subset of B when A is the set 1, 2, 3, and B is the set 2? I could have, instead of writing that question in words, just written this symbol. Writing this symbol has the same meaning as that sentence, is A a subset of B? And the answer to this would, would be no, because the numbers 1 and 3 are in the set A, but they're not in the set B. Basically, every element in the set that you write to the left of the subset sign has to be contained in the set that you write to the right of the subset sign. So the answer to that question is no, A is not a subset of B. There's another question jammed in here, and that question says, is B a subset of A? And I could have written that question like that. Instead of writing words, I can use symbols to represent the words. For that matter, I could have written that question like this. Is the set 2 contained in the set 1, 2, 3? So this line right here, as well as that set of symbols right there, as well as that set of symbols right there, are all asking me exactly the same question, that is, 
is every element in the set B c contained in the set A? And the answer to this second question is yes, because B is a set, and the only element in it is 2, and that element is in the set to the right of it. So to be a subset, it is important what's, what, which, what set is, is required to be the subset. So for these two sets, the set A, which is a set 1, 2, 3, is not contained in the set B, but the set B is contained in the set A. So A is not a subset of B, but B is a subset of A. This is because A is not a subset of B because there's elements in A that aren't in B. B is a subset of A because the only element in B is, a sub, is in A. And then this whole page talks about something that's not probably not worthy of an entire page. Uh, it talks about the empty set, and by default, the empty set is a subset of every set. And this page goes to talk about why that's the case. So to, for, for a set not to be a subset, it has to contain something that's not in the other set. So when I said this set A, is not a subset of the set B, this is because the left set had two elements, one and three, that weren't in the right set. So to be not a subset, the, the set to the left of the subset symbol has to contain something that's not in that right set. But the empty set, there's nothing in it. So both of these symbols represent a set with nothing in it, and by default, the empty set is a subset of the set 1, 2, 3. The empty set is a subset of the set A, D, G, and H. Because for it not to be a subset, there would have to be something in the set that isn't one of those items. So this right here, the empty set is a subset of 1, 2, and 3 because it doesn't have anything in it. So it doesn't have anything in it that's not in the so for this not to be a subset, it would have to have like a 4 or a B or a, a W or a 17 in the left set. Similarly, this is also a true statement that the empty set is a subset of the set A, D, G, and H. Notice I use different symbols to represent the empty set. Both of these represent a set with no elements. And by default, the empty set's a subset of every set. I didn't call out um, problems in the text quite as nicely as I did last time, I don't think. Maybe I did. Oh, yes. So this group of problems on this page is getting me used to some, um, getting me ready for questions that are going to be in the book. Some of the problems are subset problems. Some of the problems are symbols from the last section. And so on this page, I see this symbol that we just talked about, which is a subset symbol. I also see this symbol and that symbol. And you may have forgotten what these are. This symbol is, is an element. And this symbol is, is not an element. And I'll go through and do all these problems. And by the time I get done with these problems, um, if, you're not, if you didn't remember exactly what the symbols meant, you should be fine. You should be able to understand um, how to do the problems in the text. So problem one says silver is a subset of the set gold, silver, and diamond. And it's so tempting to put this is a true statement or yes, this is true, because I see silver to the left of the subset symbol and I see silver inside the set. So it's the case that every, that silver is in the right set, but this isn't a subset because to be a subset, you have to be a set. 
And in order for this to be true, had the problem said this, the set containing silver is a subset of this set containing gold, silver, and diamond. That would be a true statement, but that's not the problem that's given. The problem that's given says silver, which is not a set, is a subset. And in order to be a subset, you have to be a set. So the answer to the problem one is false, even though silver is contained in the set to the right of the equal sign, silver isn't written in set notation, it's not a set. And in order to be a subset, the thing to the left of the symbol has to be a set. So the answer to one is false. Two says the set containing the numbers two and three is a subset of the set containing one, two, three, four, and five. And this is going to be a yes. It fits the two criteria. To be a subset, you have to be a set. And once I put the little set braces around the numbers two and three, that becomes a set. And every element in that set is in the right set. So this is a true statement. So in order to indicate something as a set, I need to use some sort of notation. And just a letter or a word written without any notation doesn't imply a set. So three has the same issue as one. So two and three are essentially the same problem, except the answer to three is false, and the answer to two was true. The reason three is false is because that isn't a set. It's true that two and three are contained in the set one, two, three, four, and five, but because the two and the three aren't grouped together in some sort of set braces, that's not a set. If I look at four, to the left of my subset symbol, I see a set. So I haven't, I, I'm not worried about it not being a set. But what I need is for the set to the right of the subset symbol, it needs to contain A, and the, the set that's defined to the right of the subset symbol has the vowels, which are A, E, I, O, and U, and I'm not, I don't know what to do with Y, but it doesn't matter here. The answer to this is gonna be true. This is, in fact, a subset because it's a set and the only item in it is in the set to the right of the symbol. Five's just like one and three, it's gonna be a false. Even though A is in this, this set, this is not a set. Because A is not a set, then it can't be a subset. So when I just have a single letter or a single word or a pair of numbers and they're not grouped in the set symbols, then if they're without symbols, they're considered elements. And six is different than five. Six is saying A is an element of the set A, E, I, O, and U. And to be an element, this just means if I take the set and list it in roster form, that element is in the set, and that's gonna be the case here because, so even though A, the element A is not a subset, it is an element, so this is gonna be a true statement. So this little group of problems is just trying to get us used to notation. S similarly, Question seven reads, two is an element of the set one, two, three, four, and five. So two is not a subset, but it is an element, so this is gonna be true. Eight says two is not an element. Well, two is an element, so it would be false to say it's not an element. If I wanted to write a true statement for the not element symbol, I could do something like this. This is not on the page, but this would be a true statement. Six is not an element of the set that contains one, two, three, four, and five. This would be a true statement. So for element symbols, to the left of the element symbol, I can't have a set notation. And for something to be an element, it has to be in the list. For something to not be an element, it can't be in the list. 
9 is a false statement because two, this 2 isn't an element, it's a subset. So it would be true to say that this is a subset, but it's not an element. In the last one on this page, 10, the empty set by default is a subset of every set. So that's going to be a true statement. Let me make sure there's not more on this page. Oh, there's two more that I should worry about here before I have you do a couple problems from the text. So 11 and 12 both deal with the empty set. So this symbol can be replaced by the squiggly brackets without anything inside. So problem 11 says the empty set is the subset of the set 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And problem 12 says the empty set is a subset, is an element of the set 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Hopefully, you're able to determine which of these is true and which is false without me writing on it, the answer. 11 is true by default. The empty set is a subset of every set because to be a subset, you have to be a set, which is it is, and there can't be anything in this set that's not in there. This by default is true. And to say the empty set is an element, that's false because to be, to be an element, you can't have the set brackets on it. So I'm going to say this is a false statement. So if I look at the syllabus, the first group of problems in the syllabus that, that we're going to focus on are the problems from 7 through 24. So after watching this section of the video, you should be able to do 7, 9, 11, 15, 17, 19, and 21 in section 2.2. And I'll just do a couple of those just so you can see a few done. In fact, I'll, and, and you'll see that they're real similar to the page that I just did. So let me do, um, let me do 10 and I don't know, 14 and 18. So your homework um, involves just from this part of the lecture involves doing a chunk of these problems and they're basically the same kind of problems. You'll notice, oh, the author snuck a symbol in here that I haven't been focusing on. And number 10, this is a proper subset symbol. I mentioned it, but I haven't done problems with it. So I should talk about it a little bit. So this problem 10 is going to be false. It says the set red, it says the element red is a subset of the set red, green, and blue. Actually says it's a proper subset. So this symbol says the set, the set is a subset that is not equal. If red was in a set bra bracket and it was a set, this would be a true statement. This is going to be a false statement because red by itself isn't a, a set. Here's an extra problem. If the problem had said this, red is a proper subset of red, green, and blue, that would be true because it's a set that's perfectly contained. And had it said this, red is a subset or equal of red, green, and blue, that also would be true. So to be a subset, you have to at least be a set. And number 10, red is written as an element. It's not a set, so it can't be a subset. And once we have, there's two subset symbols. The one subset symbol we've been working on, it, it allows equality. The subset symbol that I mentioned but didn't work with doesn't allow equality. So if I gave up these extra problems, if I said the set containing red and blue 
is a subset of the set, a proper subset of the set containing red and blue, that would be false. The subset symbol without the equal sign doesn't allow equality. But if I said the set containing red and blue is a subset or equal to the set containing red and blue, that would be true. So the symbol that I hadn't dwelled on so much is a subset symbol that doesn't allow equality. And so in order for something to be a subset, it has to be a set and has to be contained. And without the equal symbol, you can't be equal. Getting back to this, um, problem 14, hopefully you have your text out so you can read this. If you can't read it with my font that here. This says the set containing engineer is a subset or it's equal to the set containing architect, physician, attorney, and engineer. And that's going to be true. 10 is, was a false statement. And then the last one that I'm going to do here, the set containing 3811 is a subset or it's equal to the set containing 3811. And that's true. Had that subset symbol not had the little line under it, then I'd have to write false. So hopefully you can do all the problems that I assigned on the syllabus between 7 and 24. And anytime you do a problem, you should check your answer. Because the author in the back of the book he has answers to every homework problem that I assign. Because I basically only assign odd problems. And I see here on the page A4, there's answers to all the odd problems in section 2.2. So way in the back of the book, you can find answers to any odd problem that I assign. Ha <laughs> ha. So I was a little premature here. This whole little lecture that I just gave about proper subset is um, here. So you could read, read through this. This is just saying, if I don't have the equal sign, it doesn't allow equality. So this is um, just a, a short write-up of what I just talked about. I'm not going to talk about it again, but I'll go down to these. It says, which of these are true? And hopefully, you can answer each of those four questions without having to watch me do them. So they're either going to be true or false. The first one I'm going to write false because without the line under it, you're not allowed to have equality. Had this problem had the line under the subset symbol, this is considered a proper subset symbol, and this is just a, a generic subset, and a generic subset can be equal. So had the problem been written like this, I would have written true. The second question here is going to be true. Because in order to be a proper subset, you have to be a set, and you can't be equal, and you have to be completely contained. The third one by default is true. The, sub, the empty set is a subset of every set, and it's a proper subset of every set because it's not going to be equal. And then the last one is by default false because the A is not written in set brackets, so it's an element and not a set. Oh, more of these. Um, so the next question that I didn't number says A is an element of A, B, C. So hopefully, again, you're able to answer the three little questions that I have bulleted here without me actually doing any explanation. So this is a true statement, because to be an element, you're not going to be a set, but you're going to be inside the set. So that's going to be true. The third one, second one, says A, A, the set containing A is a subset. And that's a true statement as well as a subset that's not equal. And this last one is tricky. Um, I know that doesn't come on the test. This says one is not a proper subset of the set containing one. So if the problem had said this, 
one is a proper subset of one, I'd say false, because to be a proper subset, it can't be equal. When I put a line through it, it means it's not. So this statement says one is not a proper subset of one, and it isn't a proper subset of one, so that's true. This is certainly not on the test. I don't think I know how to draw that symbol. Well, I guess I did. I typed this, so I do know how to draw that symbol, but it's not on the test. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't horrible. Now I'll get into this next group of problems. This next group of problems is supposed to help you with problems 25 through 32 in the section. And that's going to be most of what we have left. And that's, you can read that. But um, the next group of problems that the, this video will focus on are 25, 27, 29, and 31 in the homework. And four questions are asked, actually five. Are the two sets equal? Is A a subset or equal to B? Is B a subset or equal to A? Is A a subset of B? but not equal if B a subset of A or not equal or none of the above. If I look at the sets in question A, let me abbreviate these. I'm going to say set A equals the set Trix, Captain Crunch, and Rice Krispies. Set B is the set Rice Krispies. If I try to figure out which of these is true, A is bigger than B, so A can't be contained in B. These are clearly not equal because they don't have exactly the same elements. A is not contained or equal to B because Trix and Captain Crunch is in A but not in B. But if I look at this symbol, is B a subset or equal to A? That saying is the set containing Rice Krispies a subset of the set containing Trix, Captain Crunch, and Rice Krispies. That's true. Similarly, this symbol, well, A is, not, A is also not a subset of B because of the two things in A that aren't in B, but also this symbol, B is a subset of A, that's also true because it's a subset that's not equal. So for question one on this page, the two symbols that are proper is B is a subset or equal and B is a proper subset. Those are, of the choices that I'm given, those are the true ones. If I look at problem two, those sets are equal. They both have the elements two, four, and six. So this is going to be a true statement. A is equal to B. And then this is also going to be a true statement because this says A is either a subset or it's equal. So it allows to be a proper subset or equal. So that's going to be true because they're equal. Similarly, this is also going to be true because this says B, B is either a proper subset or it's equal to A. Because it's equal, it's OK. Those three are true, but these, A is a subset of B, isn't going to be true because that one doesn't allow the sets to be equal, and they are equal. And this one, B is a subset of A, that's also not going to be part of my answer because, again, that doesn't allow the sets to be equal. So the three items that are true are A is equal to B, A is a subset of B, B is a subset of A. When I don't have the little line under it, I should probably read it as proper subset. In order to do three, I have to be able to figure out what the set A is, and set A says A X contains a set of x and x is our natural numbers greater than 5. Natural numbers greater than 5 would be like 6, 7, 8, 9, dot, dot, dot. And now I have to figure out what if once the sets aren't equal, so I'm not going to, I'm going to discount a equal to b. And now I have to figure out if the sets are contained, if one set is contained in another. And when I look at this, it looks like b is contained no, it looks like A is contained in B because A are the natural numbers from 6 on. So every element of A is contained in B, and A is not equal to B. So for this one, it would be proper to say A is contained in B, but it's not equal. And A is either contained or equal. So A is a, a proper subset of B, and A is a subset of B. These would be the two symbols 
that are correct for this one because A is contained and it's not equal. So both the sub sub symbols would be true. And then last part, four, the sets aren't equal because they don't have exactly the same element, so I'm not going to count equal. And then when I look for A being a subset of B, A is not a subset of B because A has one and two in it that's not in B. So either the ones that say A is a proper subset or A is a subset of B aren't true. And similarly, saying B is a subset of A won't work e either because B has items in it that aren't in A. So this is going to be a none of these. So the theory would have it that you should be able to do the problems that I assigned between 25 and 32. Let me just do um, problem 26. So 26 has exactly the same questions. Determine whether A is equal to B, A is a subset of B, B is a subset of A, A is a proper subset of B, B is a proper subset of A, or none of these. And if I look at 26, A is a set of natural numbers less than 6. So A has the numbers in it, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Those are the natural numbers, less than 6. B has all the natural numbers between 1 and 5 and including the 1 and 5 because of the or equal to. So B has the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So these sets are equal, so it would be correct to say A is equal to B. And both the subsets that have the equals will also be true. So saying A is a subset of B with the equal sign and B is a subset of A with the equal sign will also be okay. And so hopefully you're able to do the few problems that I asked you to do in um, this grouping. The last thing we need to deal with is listing all of the subsets and that can be a nuisance. But um, I'll keep the numbers small so we can get the answers. So this is supposed to help me with problems 33 through 38 in the text. The only problems that we haven't looked at are problems 35 and 36. I generally never assign an even problem for homework, but the odd, there weren't enough odd problems in there to give you practice. So when you do 36, you might want to check your answer with me because you can't check it in the back of the book. So to list all the subsets of any set, for every set, the empty set is a subset. So if I want to list all the subsets of A, there's a, sub, there's a subsets that have zero elements. That's the set, the empty set. And then there's the subsets containing one element. In this case, the set containing just one. The number one would be a subset of one element. The other subset with one element would be the set containing just the number two. So this is my subset with zero elements. These are my subsets with one element. Now I'm going to do my subset with two elements, and that's the set itself. So those are all the subsets of A. So there are actually four subsets of A. That, that set was small enough that it wasn't hard for me to get all the subsets. Unfortunately, the bigger, the more elements a set has, the more subsets it has. And it's nice to know how many subsets I'm trying to list if I'm asked to list all the subsets. To find the number of subsets, you'll take two and raise it to the number of elements in the set. So for B, it's asking me to list all the subsets. And the number of subsets B will have is going to be 2, which comes from a formula, to the third power because B has three elements. 2 to the third power is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. So when I list all the subsets of B, I hope to list eight different subsets. For A, the number of subsets A was going to have in question 1 is going to be 2 to the second power. The second power has to do with the two elements in A, and 2 to the second power is 4. So A was going to have four sub subsets. B here is going to have eight subsets, and I'll try to list them. First, I'm going to list the subsets with zero elements. That's just the empty set. 
Then I'm going to list the subsets with one element. That's the set that contains just the number 1, the set that contains just the number 2, and the set that contains just the number 3. Now I'm going to try to list the subsets that contain three ele two elements, and those are going to be the set containing 1 and 2, the set containing 1 and 3, that's just two elements and that's a subset, and lastly the set containing 2 and 3. So I did zero elements, one element, two element, and now I'm going to list the subset that has three elements, that's going to be the set itself. It's not a proper subset, but it's a subset. I claim that that's all the subsets. Let me count up to make sure I have eight here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight sets, so I did perfectly. Three wants me to list all the subsets of the set C. The number of subsets is going to be eight again because C has eight el three elements. And to find the number of subsets, I take 2 and raise it to the number of elements in the set. In this case, 2 cubed is 8. So hopefully you can pause the video and list all the subsets of, of C. And you should have 8 of them. The order that you list the subsets in doesn't need to be the same as my order. So if you pause the video, that's great. If you don't, you can just watch me do this. So when I list the subsets of C, the empty set is a subset of every set. I could have used this notation instead of writing the empty set. Now I'm going to write the subsets that have one element. That would be the set containing just the letter A, the set containing just the letter B, and the set containing just the letter C. Now I'll do the subsets that have two elements. That would be the subset containing the letters A and C. I should have done A and B first, but it's okay. The subset containing A and B the subset containing B and C. And those are all the subsets that have two letters. And now I'm going to jump to the subset that has three letters, which is the set itself, which is the set A, B, and C. If I count up, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have all the subsets. Four says how many subsets will D have? doesn't ask me to list the subsets. It just asks me how many. And the number of subsets D will have is going to be 2 to the third power. The reason the third power is because D has three elements. And 2 to the third power is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. Don't have to list the subsets because it just asked me how many. 5 says how many elements will the set E have if E contains the elements 1, 2, 3, and 4. And the number of subsets E will have is 2 to the fourth power because there's four elements in E. And that's going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. So if I tried to list all the subsets of E, I'd have 16 subsets. I'd start off listing the empty set, then the set containing the number just 1, then just 2, just 3, just 4, and then I'd get bigger and bigger. This number 6 says if A, if the number of elements in the set A is K, then the number of subsets A has, this would not be on a test but this is what the formula is. If you have a set that has k elements, it has two to the k subsets. And this is, this is really overly precise. If you were a math major, this is the kind of, the higher you get in math, the more questions would be worded abstractly like that. So that's everything in the section. And then in terms of homework problems, the only homework I picked for these group of problems were 35 and 36. They're a bit of a nuisance because the author used words as opposed to numbers or letters to define the sets, but hopefully you could realize that B is going to have four subsets, C is going to have eight subsets, and hopefully you can list them all. If you can't get the four subsets for B, for 35, you can check in the back of the book. If you can't get eight subsets for 36, then um, Ask me and I'll do it in class. So hopefully that takes you through this section. Section 2-3 is the most cumbersome, difficult section in the chapter. It's probably where the bulk of the points that, that 
make their way onto the test will come from this chapter. And it took me two videos to, to um, record that. That's uh, Those videos you're absolutely going to want to watch before you come to class because I can't really do two, three in one day, but yet I only give myself one day to do it in class. So you're going to have to have the videos watched so class will kind of go smoothly. Okay.